Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very, very interesting things. The first thing is Urs Kalecinski posing with Sam Sulek. Did you guys expect we're gonna see this anytime soon? Because I didn't, and it was a treat. So let's take a look at this. So basically we already had the opportunity to see Sam compared to Samson Dauda. Now that didn't make sense at all. Of course, Samson is like three times bigger than Sam, but now we get a comparison that kind of makes sense. A top classic VZ guy, and in this year's Mr. Olympia, Urs was matching the top two guys as well with size. Like he was at the level of size with Sibam and with Mike Sommerfeld. So this is basically the top classic VZ guy, size wise, conditioning wise, shape wise. And we get to compare Sam Sulek to him and to see where Sam Sulek actually is in terms of his size in competitive bodybuilding. Now, of course, this is Urs a day after Mr. Olympia, so he's already in competition condition, and also he probably ate a whole bunch of junk food, so he's even fuller, which is not ideal for stage, but for the gym, for the posing after the workout, it's freaking perfect. He still has the tan on and everything, and Sam, I don't know exactly in which phase he is right now, but I think he said that he just started his cut, so he was bulking up until uh, one week ago, so he's here he is even depleted his fat, so this is not exactly, this is definitely, this is probably the worst time of the year for Sam Stolik, unfortunately, but still, still he is as big as he can be, really, maybe not as full as he could be, but like very, very big, and we can see exactly where he uh, stacks up uh, versus Urs Kalecinski in terms of size. Now, as far as the front lat spread right here, what we can notice here is that Sam doesn't have the smallest waist. You know, he has a little bit of a wider waist. Even though he's pulling a vacuum, you know, it's it's not a super tiny waist like Urs has. Again, this is a top Olympian, one of the guys with the smallest waist in, in the classic physique in the FBB. So, you know, Sam's waist will appear even bigger than it is, but still, it's not a tiny waist, let's be real. Now, as far as size of the arms and the shoulders, he's matching him in that regard. They're pretty close, I would say. As far as the legs, you know, Sam actually has some pretty big legs. Even though Urs is known for massive legs here, his legs maybe even seem smaller than Sam's. But Sam's legs are not complete. I mean, they are just wide. He just doesn't have the quality, the details, he doesn't have like the adductors, he doesn't have the rectus femoris, like the lateralis also is lacking, so his legs, even though they're not small, they're actually pretty big, I would say, they're just not complete. If he wants to be a competitive bodybuilder, he needs to work on details on his legs, like hit them from all angles, but as far as size versus oars, they're actually pretty good, they're holding up. Now, if this was off-season, Urs Kalecinski, if he actually pushed his off-season and if he was the way he was a couple of years ago when he was like 270 in the off-season, he would probably dwarf Sam Sulek. He had to make weight, he had to lose a lot of weight. So he's not exactly at his biggest right here, but with the conditioning, he's kind of creating an illusion of size. Now, as far as chest, that's Sam Sulek's weak point, and I think it's Urs's weak point as well. But it's it's close, actually, you know, size-wise. So overall, they're kind of matching. Like, Sam Sulek is basically, you know, I would say the size of, of a very good, of a top classic physique competitor. He doesn't have exactly the details and a polished physique, but size-wise, he's there. Now, in the side chest, here you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to legs. Like, uh, Sam doesn't have the hamstrings either. And like the glutes also, like that's something he needs to work on, the details in the legs, hit them from all angles, hit all the four heads of the quadricep and then focus on the hamstrings quite a lot, the glutes as well need to be brought up. So from the side, Urs's legs are a lot better, but as far as the arms from the side, I would say Sam has better arms, right? I mean, he has better arms, maybe even bigger shoulders. But because Urs is so conditioned, you know, he has more details and he knows how to hit the pose the best way. He actually looks very good here, but, you know, Sam actually, you know, he, he also has broader chest, wider chest, big shoulders, big arms, upper body in the side chest. Sam is holding up quite nicely, I gotta say. Now, back. Sam's back is probably his strongest body part. 
And the back is the kind of body part that looks good only when you are shredded. I mean, he's like in okay condition, he's not exactly super fat, but you know, for him, this is probably the worst his conditioning gets. You know, he's definitely a lot leaner when he's doing his cuts. Uh, and he has a good back, he has a really good back, but Urs's back came up a lot. However, like the size, the, the, the lat thickness, you could even make an argument that Sam has bigger lats, right? But, you know, with his conditioning being the way it is and the size of his waist, you know, Urs is creating an illusion of having like, you know, better wheat taper. But, you know, as far as like the, the sheer size, the meat in those lats, maybe, maybe Sam has even more muscle there. Now, they're gonna hit the abs and thighs pose, but unfortunately, they didn't hit it at the same time. So first, Urs hit the abs and thighs, but Sam did a vacuum, and then they switched. But Urs pulled a vacuum as well, so we can compare them right here. So when Sam does the, the, the abs and thighs, he knows how to open up the lats. And that makes, and with the vacuum, it makes his waist actually seem a lot smaller. Uh, and as far as the legs, again, those legs are actually pretty big. Uh, Sam also has the angle. You know, maybe it would be different if Sam was standing on his side. But still, when I saw Sam's legs, I was actually surprised. I thought his legs were smaller, and that's because he lacks details. But, you know, sheer size-wise, his legs are actually pretty good. Upper body, it's actually pretty close. So overall, I can say Sam Sulek has a lot of muscle. I mean, not as much as the open bodybuilders. And he doesn't have exactly super pretty, aesthetic, classic lines. So I think he's meant for the open, but at some day in the future, and I think he needs to work more on his details. If he wants to compete, if he wants to be a competitive open bodybuilder, he should hire a professional bodybuilding coach who is gonna help him with not just growing more, but also growing in the right direction, you know, making the right adjustments with training, with nutrition and everything. He can definitely get good and be a good open guy one day in the future. As of right now, he does have a lot of size. He definitely has basically as much size as a top classic physique guy. What do you guys think? All right, the next thing is also very, very interesting. Uh, it's Rolly Winkler. Now, this guy retired a couple of years ago, basically. I don't think he ever made it official, but he just stopped competing. And he downsized significantly. Like, all of his physique updates were looking like he was not even training at all. But today, we got this photo. It's uh, Rolly with Hunter Labrada. Hunter Labrada, who is one of the biggest guys in the IFBB today. That's right, one of the biggest guys. And also, he's known for his side tricep pose. And I would say for his triceps, particularly. Like, when he does this, when he flexes the triceps like this, it looks very, very impressive. Especially because of the shape of his triceps. He has a really crazy-looking horseshoe. And also, he has a lot of mass in those triceps. But... Here, Rolly, next to him, actually looks pretty big. Now, Rolly, he made this pose iconic, basically. You guys probably remember a whole bunch of those iconic photos of Rolly and Lee Priest hitting this pose. And Rolly was, when he was at his best, he was known for having the biggest arms. One of the biggest arms in the history of bodybuilding. Now, he didn't look like this uh, for the past couple of years. Not even close. So I went to his account, and he posted a couple of videos, such as this one, in which it appears that Rolly brought up the size back quite a bit. The main reason, as far as I know, why Rolly retired was uh, the, the, the shoulder issue. He had a shoulder surgery, he wasn't able to train for a long time, and he downsized significantly. But I guess he recovered, because look at him now. Look at him now, I mean, he is big and full and in pretty good shape as well. Rolly is back, that's for sure. Is he back into competitive bodybuilding, potentially, next year? I don't know, he didn't announce anything. I mean, could he come back? I think he's still young enough and fresh enough, I think he could. I don't think he has any crazy injuries, I mean, any injuries at all, I don't think so. So I think he could come back and look very good, especially considering that he is this massive right now. So maybe next year we're gonna have a Rolly Winkler comeback. I don't know, but as of right now, he definitely does look... Oh, he almost looks the way he used to look when he was at his prime. You know, he definitely brought a lot of size back. What do you guys think? And the last thing I wanted to talk about is Brandon Curry. Now, in my prediction, I had Brandon placing higher. And after seeing what he looked like at this year's Mr. Olympia, 
I don't see why he couldn't have placed higher. Again, I don't see any injuries, any muscles melted. I don't think he has any signs of aging. And I don't think he was down in size. I think he was basically his usual size. The reason why he plays so low, in my opinion, is simply because he wasn't as conditioned. Right? He didn't have the deepest separation. And like, uh, especially next to the other guys who all brought really good condition. Like, he didn't have the details. And, and it's simple as that. Look at the lower back. Look at the, 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 the hamstrings. Basically everything. Like, the back itself. The, the conditioning wasn't that good. That's the only thing. So, is Brandon Curry done? Is his career really over? I mean, he did place ninth at this year's Mr. Olympia because of conditioning once again. Look at the glutes right here. I mean, definitely in condition. But, five years ago, he was the Mr. Olympia. He won the contest. And again, I don't think he lost a lot of size. So, I don't see why would he retire. So, basically, he made a post in which he addressed this and he says... I'm very blessed to be heading home on a flight as we speak, all intact from this weekend. Uh, I've been in the trenches for a while and my body is still responsive to the process and manipulatable from year to year. I really enjoy this prep and the challenge it brought. I might not have been able to peak perfectly this time, but I still made some visual improvements in my physical from, my la from last year. So I'm looking forward with more optimism in what uh, could be accomplished in time. No, this old man is not, not tired yet. I honestly don't feel like an old man at all, but people label you in this sport, and I'll just embrace and inspire those in my age range. So yeah, it seems like Brandon is not retiring. What he needs to do is the opposite of what he did last year, this year or last year. Uh, he tried to pull a Levroni this year, to not do bodybuilding the entire year, to not be focused, to not talk to his coach, and then just go and do the camp for the last 11 weeks. You know, he still got to the Mr. Olympia stage and cracked the top 10, but for a guy who was a Mr. Olympia once, that's not the approach to do, man. Like, he, uh, today, especially with so many great competitors, you just can't do that. But if he focuses for an entire year, if he goes to Kuwait, like, right now, and trains the entire year and, like, stays lean and stays big and then starts prepping in time and actually works much harder on his condition and gets even bigger, maybe improves his legs a little if it is possible, I can definitely see him in that uh, top five, top six. I mean, if he was on this year, if he was 20% better, I can probably see him beating Andrew and Hunter Labrada and, like, go against Martin Fitzwater and fight for the fourth. That would have probably been the outcome if he was on. But he was significantly off with his conditioning. And that's the only thing. He just needs to work on conditioning. And by that, he also needs to work on size in the offseason so he can afford to get in crazy condition without losing the fullness and the size. He has it all, man, basically. I mean, weaker legs, sure. But, like, that's the only thing. Everything else is basically great. You know, the size of the legs from behind is also very good. Uh, upper body is crazy, arms are there, shoulders, chest, back, a small waist, great abs, size overall, and like crazy 3D bubbly look, I mean, he can still be a top guy, he needs to just focus more, hopefully he will next year, but we'll see, anyways guys, tell me, what do you think down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more content like this guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye bye.